Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Stepping Up. I'm your host, Danielle Dubois. This week, we shine the light on TVET programming. We enter the kitchens of two secondary schools, chat with the teachers and students, as well as the head of the TVET program, all in an effort to better understand and appreciate the field of TVET. <laughs> TVET is the abbreviation for Technical and Vocational Education and Training. It is understood as comprising education, training and skills development relating to a wide range of occupational fields, production, services, and livelihoods. TVET in St. Lucia is governed by the St. Lucia Council for Technical and Vocational Education and Training. It was formally established by an Act of Parliament in November 2007 to coordinate and monitor formal, informal, and non-formal TVET programs at a national level. Several training institutions and individual training providers offer training to candidates in a variety of skill areas and certification systems. In this first segment, we talk to Mr. Clovis Samuels, who is the Education Officer with responsibility for TVET. Then we head to the Mikud Secondary School and chat with Ms. Raymond and join her FNN class. Let's take a look at the interview. So Mr. Samuel, hello and thank you so much for joining the show. Thank you very much. Um, indeed a pleasure to be here and to be given the opportunity to advertise, sell TFED because TFED is considered um, the best kept secret. A lot is happening but people don't know and really need to change that. So thanks very much for the opportunity to do that. I want to say thank you very much for saying yes. So you know already you started off um, the ball rolling. TFED has a lot of misconceptions, right? Let us know what is it that you want people to know about TFED that to help change the perception that we have that you know tvet is a lot of things that tvet is for probably persons who didn't finish school etc so let's know about that well you're right to say that tvet has been given a bad name so to speak um in spite of the value of tvet um part of it could be the fact that tvet is still seen as a stepchild um, of the education system um, as opposed to being integrated and actually part of the education system. Um, some people feel that TVET is only done by people who have brawn and no brain. There's a term that people use, um, not academically inclined. Yes. Um, but we in TVET know that you have to operate at the level of synthesis and, and you have to be able to create, etc., etc., in order to provide a finished product that is making sense. Mm -hmm. We want people to know that TVET is here to stay. TVET is actually, even if you look at the um, ILO website, they'll tell you that most of the jobs require some skill. Yeah. And most of those jobs can't be accessed because people do not have the skills. Mm -hmm. So now is the time more than any, especially in, this, in, in light of this new normal that we're experiencing as a consequence of COVID, um, TVET is now coming back to the fore. Mm -hmm. And um, this is a chance for us in St. Lucia, especially being a small island state, to really really embrace the, the opportunity for us to develop the capacity of our people and if you do that then you they're able to employ themselves or seek employment wherever but ultimately the person will grow and the country will grow um, as a result of that. How are you doing today? <laughs> Good thanks. Thank you so much for saying yes and welcoming us to your kitchen and we want to know what exactly is happening here today and I see they were dressed in different uniforms. Just give us an overview as to what exactly we're doing today. Um, I realized that Mikud Secondary, since universal education, Mikud Secondary does not get the caliber of students that they used to get. And a lot of children are leaving secondary school with just one CXC which is sad but with CVQ you are trained and you are able to work if you have a CVQ certificate you are able to work you are able to leave the country go elsewhere and work with that um, certificate so the only CVQ that I felt that was really lined up with the nutrition that they were doing was the dietetics so I started that with this group of students unfortunately they've left but I have a lot of 
I teach fashion as well. Okay. Clothing, um, and textiles. textiles and fashion. So I like, I believe that if you addressed the part, then you will want to work the part. Yes. So hence the reason why that they're wearing, because they are dressed like, like chefs, yes, workers. in the industry. Yes. So, so, mm -hmm. so you were saying that um, the CVQ, what's, what exactly does CVQ stand for? And there are several, and you decided yes, to bring this one into the, yes. into the secondary school. So tell me about that. This one is having to do with dietetics and has a lot of nutrition in it. It has some food preparation in it as well. And I felt it was well aligned with the C, um, CXC syllabus. Hence the reason why I chose that one. CVQ is a certificate in vocation education. So when you are done, you have something, you have trained. It's not like CXC, where you just study and you go and write a paper and you probably pass. And you have, you have no skills to match that CXC. But right now they have a skill and they will be put on placement. They will do their assessment. So all of that work that they are doing here is to put towards their portfolio. Yeah. Right. And what form are they in? Do, do, does one of the, do the students have to be in a specific form? No. What is it that, you know, can people who are probably not in school join the program? Yes. Tell us a little bit about admission and testing. Well, if um, they will not be able to do it with me at school, mm -hmm. but currently I'm doing bread cakes and pastry with the form fours right. and i do that with sky as well so they will get a certificate you said sky what's yes sky? Uh, is sky the same thing as CVQ? no sky yeah. is um a new thing that nell you has started because i guess everybody has come to the realization that you need certification that's where the world is going if you don't have certification, you just cannot get a job. Yeah. And the technical vocation, um, the TVET aspects of the program allows persons, as you say, to be on the ground yes. and they are able to learn and be able to transfer these skills, oh, yes. right? So tell me what exactly is the team doing here today? I see grapes, I see all different uh, things. <laughs> because they are doing dietetics, okay. they have to be able to educate their clients as to what to eat and especially now with all of those lifestyle diseases so that's why we chose diabetes it's a very common illness so today they are doing breakfast examples that diabetics can use yeah so can you tell me a little bit about what you have on the menu okay so <laughs> i cannot tell you I did the grocery shopping and it's up to them to come up with ideas oh, okay. right okay. so um so it's almost like a little bit of discovery learning. yes it's okay. discovery learning so based on the ingredients they've decided to do um i think they're making a smoothie they're doing um and you can see they've started with the smoothie they're doing yogurt with um with cereal and the fruits um and i think she's doing a, a burrito with eggs mushrooms and whatever else wrapped in a whole wheat bun yes so we have yes, this is a pizza bread so they are going to make turkey sandwiches, tuna sandwiches, right. and that's what they're going to wrap the burrito in. But then I'm thinking too, once somebody gets to the opportunity to do this, right, they could probably offer themselves in a private capacity to yes. somebody who probably wants their yes. own chef or exactly. somebody who has an ailment or something like yes. that. that. So as you said, nice. So as we conclude our interview, what would you say to somebody who has probably left school? What would you say to somebody who is kind of unsure as to what they want to do, may have an interest? Just let the nation know the importance of not being shy to be able to try and come and do these programs. Because um, and what's the process for application? Nelu has it, so they can go to the Nelu and get an application. I think Nelu is going to restart in January. We are just completing now, and SS not SSDF, NSDC always have those programs, so they can always go there. Right. But my thing is. 
you've already left school and then for you to go and pay money that you do not have to go and do something to get money but then if we introduce the CVQs at the school there are so many CVQs you can I cannot even fathom the idea of telling you because they're just not in my head so they are very because I'm just doing two Right. And these two are closest to my heart, so that's why I that's love bread pastry, cakes and that. pastry. Uh -huh. Right, and then the dietetics that I've just started. Right. So, so Miss Raymond, any final words as we wrap up our interview today? Oh, I just want the forces that be to help the Mikud Secondary. If there's anybody who has any funds lying around, help us because we really do need to get equipment for our kitchen so that yeah. our students can benefit from the program from the program oh yes it's oh uh, yes but besides that i believe that you guys are doing great work and have you guys had any setbacks with the whole covid with the the advent of covid not really we try to overcome <laughs> yes we and try we oh yes <laughs> we we don't let things hold us back yeah. because we only got noticed on Monday to say that you were coming here on Wednesday. Yeah. And I called up my girls and here they are. Right. So, so we have to say kudos to them for, yes, for stepping out and returning yes. and coming out. And as you heard from Mrs. Raymond, anyone, you could go to the NSDC um, 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 building and I think it's in Bize. You have, yes. and there's so many opportunities available for you to continue your education in different capacities. So I want to say thank you very much. And I can't wait to taste something before we end. Yes. And keep stepping up. And yes, thank you very much. And we'll be right back. Yes, thank you. We got the opportunity to speak to one of our students. And I'm happy. This is Zora. And Zora, how are you? Let me know what you're cooking here today. Okay, I'm fine. We're doing a burrito with um, the mushrooms, eggs, cucumbers, and different greens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me know how you learned about the CVQ program and the opportunity to be here today. Well, my teacher, Miss Raymond, she introduced me to it and she encouraged me to continue and in life mm -hmm. we'll do well with it if we continue. So is cooking something that you were probably interested in or is it just because you got the direct encouragement and push from Miss Raymond? I'm interested in it. It's kind of fun and interesting. So before the program and coming to the school every day, what were you doing? What were some of the things that you were doing? At home <laughs> or in the school. So you left school already? Yes. Okay, and you came back. How long ago you left school? This year. Okay, okay. And did you guys design your costume? I mean your costume, or Jay? Well, our teacher... Your uniform. Our teacher gave it to us. She told us what we needed and stuff. And how long you have to go through the program for? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But do you feel proud to be part of something like this? And what do you look forward to be able to do when you're done or graduate? I want to continue cooking and being a chef. I want to be a chef later in life. So I think that is a good start for me. Nice. What do you have to tell to your peers who are probably at home um, about the program and CVQ in general? Well, I think they should join it because it's a good thing. Thank you so much, Ms. Raymond, for welcoming us to your kitchen and getting to chat with one of your students. Programs like these allow persons to come back and learn a skill which can better prepare them for the job market. Keep it up and thanks so much for stepping up. Wash your hands. Wash them right. With soap and lots of water. Get between fingers. Get under the nails. Go above the wrists. Do this for no less than 15 seconds. Rinse properly. Dry with a clean towel. If there is no water, do the same washing motions with an alcohol-based hand sanitizer containing at least 70% alcohol. Wash your hands. Wash them right. This message brought to you courtesy the Bureau of Health Education of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. In this next segment, we head to the Castries Comprehensive Secondary School and chat with the FNN teacher, Mrs. Kodra, and her students who had their final food and nutrition SBA presentations. Let's take a look at the interview as I explore the wonders of bread. We've been very blessed to enter the food and nutrition labs. Um, we went to Mikud and right now we continue our feature at the Castries Comprehensive School. And we want to have a quick chat with Mrs. Kodra, who is the food and nutrition teacher right here. And if you look around us, it looks like we actually were 
able to catch the SBA showing today. So just let us know a little bit more about what exactly is happening here today. Today the students are continuing with their school-based assessments where they are, were supposed to prepare breads. Mm -hmm. All right, we were looking at yeast breads and quick breads. We were, um, the focus was on the relief um, basket as per the pandemic that we are experiencing right now. Mm -hmm. So usually you would find flour in the baskets. So the students had to prepare a yeast bread and a quick bread. And they were supposed to use something local in their yeast bread. Some of them have chosen pumpkin, they've chosen spinach. And for the quick bread, well, they were supposed to use some fruits, nuts, seeds, etc., to improve the nutritional um, value of their bread. So when you say quick bread, what does that mean? Well, when, you, when we say quick breads, we are looking at breads where you don't use yeast. Ah, okay. Right? Okay, they are okay. quick and easy to prepare. Okay. So okay. we're looking at things like some of them did tea bread, some of them did muffins, some of them did scones, mm -hmm. etc. Nice. So I'm looking around and I'm realizing that the packaging is there, that all of them have a certain standard that they have to be able to present their work. Let, let us know a little bit more about the importance right. of doing so and, and what's the, um, the reasoning why. Why do you go, and go, go ahead and do that? All right. One of the things, um, one of the requirements of the SBA was that the students must package what they produce, mm -hmm. right? And in packaging what they produce, they were supposed to follow the standards of labeling, nice. right? So they would have their business name so they created a business name for themselves they also had to include their ingredient labeling or content labeling mm -hmm. and provide their nutritive information the nutritional mm -hmm. information for what the products that they produced nice right? so what is the importance um what do you have to tell anyone why fnn what's what's the, <laughs> the skills what are the what are the transferable skills directly once you know you've done fnn what edge do you have when you leave school oh you have a very big edge entrepreneurial skills small business mm -hmm. right when the students leave here they can market themselves mm -hmm. as you can see a package similar to what you see here you can pick up yeah probably at the airport yes. at, at the bakery yes you know so the students generally can market themselves. They can earn a living, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? So they're not just, we are actually preparing them for industry. Nice. So they can create something themselves when they leave school, right? Mm -hmm. So they are learning employable skills as well. Yeah. As you notice, mm -hmm. they had to give their um, product a business name. They had to design their labels. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And of course, the items had to come with quality standards. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it looks like um, almost like a business because I remember when I did business for CXC, um, you had to create your own, um, your own. Um, the SBA was the same thing about creating your own business, but here was about the business and actually creating your product. That's so right. I could imagine that you know, it really trained all aspects. It most certainly did, and if you look at some of the, the charts that the students have around the products, mm -hmm. it highlights why the local products that they use mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in their breads, the importance of those things, like sometimes people don't make use of spinach. Yeah. So for this young man over there, in terms of improving the nutritional value of his bread, he used spinach. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And his chart tells you all the health benefits that you will get from yeah. spinach. Yes, yes, yes. Over here, she looked at, I think, the fortification, enriching the flour, etc. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, what, mm -hmm. what you can add to it and so forth. Yeah. Well, Ms. Kocha, I just want to say thank you very much for allowing us to enter your lab today. <laughs> and I'm going to go around and ask the students to just let me know a little bit more of their products. Yes, you are most welcome. So, the SBA CSEC um, had us, wants us to promote the use of local ingredients mm -hmm. since there is COVID-19, the pandemic, mm -hmm. and we are... Well, I actually, I chose doing, I chose to do a banana nut bread and I incorporated plantain flour, which is a local flour from St. Lucia. Um, I think it's made by Gatters. Gatters. Yes, yes Gatters. Uh -huh. Yes, so I used that flour for my banana nut bread and for my rosemary garlic sweet potato yeast bread. Yes, 
the name practically says everything yeah, 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 so exactly i it is. so um just to wrap up last question what did you enjoy you're in form five now right what did you enjoy about fnn and what you have to tell your peers about being an fnn student yeah. to me being an fnn student it allows you to to have a lot of experience in the kitchen and you get to it's i actually i enjoy cooking that's something i also enjoy doing and responsibility thank, thank you. you very much miss Charles. <laughs> and i hope one day i could come and pick up your bread on the shelves in the supermarket my name is Shokwan Severin and I have spinach dinner rolls um, and I have raisin cream scones. So let us know about your process and in your why, what, what, decide, what, what helped you make the choice of spinach and I see you have Popeye here, I haven't seen Popeye for a while and I know that you had to do everything from the presentation and all of that conceptualizes. So tell me why is spinach and what you have, cream scones? Well, my first bread was dinner rolls and it came out very well. Very Everybody well. had liked it. Uh -huh. So I just came up with that and I don't know why I picked spinach. <laughs> I don't know. But I just ended up speak, um, picking it and it mm -hmm. came out good. What are some of the skills that you've learned um, through your tenure as an FNN student? Skills, baking. Bake? Baking, 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 baking. Baking, okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. But as I said, I wanted to be a chef. Mm -hmm. But I don't want, I don't like baking. You don't like baking? I like to be on a stove. Right. So yes, being in the FNN lab helped me with. Right. So what do you have to tell your friends about? Um, FNN and well, you know, was it an issue when you decided to choose FNN when you told your parents that because you knew you wanted to be a chef, right? So what is it that you tell your peers about FNN and you know the stuff that you've learned, you know, make appeal to the nation about it? <laughs> well, FNN is not easy, but it's not hard. Yeah. But if you want to do it, you have to stay focused and be dedicated. That's all. <laughs> well, Shokwan, thank you so much for, you know, being um, courageous enough to share with us a little bit about what you did here today. I wish you all the best and I look forward to, as I said, picking up a box of this on the shelves at the supermarket. My name is Luya Jody Wilness. Um, today, um, well, for our FNN SBA, we, um, my business name, Tasty Treats baking with a passion and today I am introducing my pumpkin dinner rolls and also my banana nut and chocolate chip bread <laughs> yes so let me know about um, your choice of ingredients um, is it something that you just decided to challenge yourself or is it because they said you had to use something local okay we had to use fruits and nuts. we had to use fruits and nuts so for the fruits is a banana bread and nuts, I chose almonds because I don't like any other nuts. <laughs> and, um, well, I like chocolate. I like chocolate in everything. Mm -hmm. So you made it about you. All right. So what is it that you want to tell your friends about FNN, being a student, you're in Form 5, right? Right. So what is it that you learn and what is it that you have to tell your friends? Well, um, FNN is a, is a science subject, so it entails a lot of studying and practicals and theory so i would tell them pick fnn it's not for the food it's to learn about it you need to learn about your foods and what you eat in what you put in inside of you and also it teaches you like different different food items you can put together like you can make up your own recipes and stuff all right do you think this is something that you might do in the long run yes i can I would choose it as a side job because I want to be an architect. Nice. Thank you very much and all the best in your, in your dreams and endeavors. So I'm at 
the Pan Amwa shop in Compré, <laughs> and I realized that your labeling stands out because you said it contains nuts. So let us know about that. Um, well, I mentioned that it contains nuts because there are a lot of nuts allergies now, and I think that it should be brought out there, and I don't think that other people should be to know when not to take that specific item. Right, so let us know a little bit about what you have today. What is it that you, you know? Um, so I have a pumpkin bread, and I also have a banana pecan muffin. Um, yeah. And you're proud of what you did today? Yes, I am. All right, and what do you have to tell your friends about the process and why they should choose FNN? FNN is an interesting subject because as much as it takes a lot of time and effort, it's also fun in a kind of way. Um, and it can also help you when you're older so that you, you basically save money since you know how to make different items and you know the benefits of what they contain. Thank you very much, Ms. Danielle. <laughs> so we're here with Miss Kayla with K Cakes and she's our last presentation for today. So just let us know a little bit more about your choice of ingredients and what you have here today. So today for my yeast bread, I made a carrot and raisin yeast bread and my quick bread, which are muffins, are banana and almond muffins. Nice. And how much would you sell? You know, you have a nice six pack. Let me tell you, the packaging is mm, 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 mm. good to go. <laughs> so about the packaging, what was the thought process? The thought, thought process? Yeah, in terms of um, the design and everything, the name. The name and the design. The name, I honestly, I didn't spend a lot of time on it. It just came to mind. Mm -hmm. And the packaging. I just wanted to be a little creative because I am presenting it to somebody. Nice. So what do you have to tell your peers about FNN as we conclude and, you know, talk about your process of being an FNN student for what, two years or three? Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> two, okay. So, mm, FNN helps boost your creativity. And you're not just learning FNN, learning to cook for yourself, you're also learning for your friends, your family. Well, thank you very much, Ken. I hope I can see you on the stall somewhere in the supermarket, in town, if your own vehicle, whatever. Right? <laughs> thank you very much. That's it for this week's installment of Stepping Up. Don't forget to shoot me an email at steppingup758 at gmail.com if you or if you know someone who would like to be featured on the show. I'm your host, Daniel Dubois. See you next time. Until then, keep safe and don't forget to keep stepping up.